Hello all you uh, hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, normally at this time of month I'd be saying it's that time of month uh, to do helmets of the month but because it's December's just gone I'd normally be saying it's it's that time of year where we do helmets a year but the year's gone but also the decade's gone so it's going to be a helmet of the decade now the votes are in uh, it took me ages to add them all up I've had that many more than at any other time uh, don't know why that is probably because even though it's a small channel we're doing more numbers now than what we've ever done I suppose so I'm really happy with that uh, so and like I said it's, it's a non-profit making channel isn't it it's just something that we've done as an hobby and trying to keep it going just to keep everybody uh, what's the word keep everybody entertained and we're correcting things that we don't agree with aren't we that's all this channel is uh, we'll speak about that in the next few videos because there's a lot lined up uh, so helmets of the decade now the votes are in I'm quite happy with everybody's explanation as to why they've voted for these certain people but I wish people would uh, when you do your helmets of the month uh, just give me a list from 15 down to 1 because it's we pick 15 don't we every time not just give me like a list of three but the good thing is people are, are telling me why they're voting for these people and uh, I I know because obviously I've stood it game on but it's nice that people are taking time out to tell me why they're, they're putting these people in now there's obviously we've got 15 people but there's actually 56 people uh, who were, who were all together have been picked but obviously the top 15 you know they get in don't they I mean we've had four people pick Eddie Hills now that's not going to get you in top 15 but the fact that they picked him he doesn't even exist but that's why they're picking him so I think that's a dig at Eddie Earn isn't it but oh Eddie Earn's got loads of votes but we'll get down to uh We'll get down to Eddie later, I'm just looking. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, I hope everybody's had a good Christmas and you've had a good New Year. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, hit your subscribe button and uh, you get your notifications straight away to your phone. That's for new one, for new, uh, new people following the channel and there's quite a few of you lately, so not that many. It's only a small channel, aren't we? But there's enough uh, to keep me busy with all these emails and I've got somebody helping me now so that's good in it as well so we're all right so here goes then uh, helmets of the decade in 15th place well, he's there isn't he good old jug ears eh? Spencer Oliver why Spencer Oliver's been picked for the decade is well he's been at Sky a long time and in our on the fringes and I personally right looking at what people have put in the comments and then thinking of if I were to pick him why I'd put him in and why others have put him in it's simple really isn't it he's wherever Adam Smith goes he goes doesn't he, he makes he gets it done. A lot of boxers, they understand how it works, especially if they're around boxing and he's working at Sky, so he understands it all. But the fact that he's commentating on darts with Adam Smith in a We Wish You a Merry Christmas jumper, matching jumpers with Adam Smith, I think, I don't know, it's, it's a bit helmet ish, isn't it? So. I don't know Spencer Oliver personally, uh, I think I've met him once but I know people that know him and well he's behaving like an helmet isn't he, you're going to get you're going to get voted and the fans see it don't they but these people have, they're not bothered the thick skin aren't they, it's just water off a duck's back I mean sooner or later these people are going to be bothered about when they're not getting in helmet, helmets of the month so alright so Spencer Oliver you've been voted in uh, do I apologize to you no I don't
because I agree with the vote. So Spencer Oliver, number 15. Right. Number 14. Now, this guy, right, if he'd have, if I'd have been doing this a few years ago, this guy would have been a top fiver. But his behaviour in the last, I'd say, four months has been nothing short of helmetness. He is a helmet. Now he's he's coming in coming in at rank number fourteen, pound for pound for the decade. You've got it. It's Andy Lee. Now. I first met Andy Lee when I was sat behind him at the Frotch Groves in Manchester, the first one that, uh, that they had. And he actually had a tracksuit on that said Andy Lee on the back of it and on his, and on his legs part as well. Blue with red right, you know. And he was sat next to Huey Fury and I was sat behind him with my partner at the time. And uh, obviously a lot of people know this story, so I'll tell it again. Uh, when it got stopped, obviously, Frotch put 16, 17 unanswered punches on Groves, didn't he? And Howard Foster stopped the fight, didn't he? I mean, he knew the script, didn't he, Howard, as Carl said. And uh, I was screaming and jumping around like an upcase, obviously, and my partner were. And uh, Andy Lee turned around and said, I suppose you think that's good, don't you? And before I could say anything, my partner, who don't really drink, but she'd had a drink, and don't really scream and shout but she did she turned around and she said yeah we uh we effing eight groves so what can you do I mean, a lot of things got on in background leading up leading up to the uh fight and things happened after so you know she had her reasons to say that but uh and Andy Lee then stormed off and got in ring didn't he if you, if you look on tv you'll see him obviously him and groves are mates but Groves fought a great fight and he was a great fighter. Uh, but the fight sold, didn't it? And Frotch and Groves are mates now, so it all worked out, didn't it? Everybody got paid. Everybody played the little parts, people on social media. Whether you were Groves or Frotch, it gripped the nation, didn't it? So, and we wish George Groves nothing but the best here at Porky's Corner. All right, but... Andy Lee, you behave like an helmet that night. You are a helmet. And no, I don't apologise for putting you in this, Andy Lee. So, all right. But a lot of people, uh, we're picking you this this time, Andy, uh, are saying that they're picking you because you've come out and you've said you, you're willing to mediate between Tyson and Ben Davidson. We'll get to that later on today, but... You're willing to mediate between Tyson and Ben Davison. Well, I'd say you are mediating, aren't you? I mean, you, you, you're doing your mediating, all right, aren't you, Andy? You're actually part of the training team, and Ben Davidson in, and he's done all the heavy lifting. So, I'm not saying I'm team Ben Davidson, but I think he's been treated shabbily. But I don't know what's going on, do we? Nobody knows. It's all a bit cloak and dagger, in it, but. Don't be coming out with that. Oh, I'm willing to mediate, so they talk and all that. Trying to play, play it good guy, while cutting you sending for a slice of cake, Andy. Look, we all know how it works, don't we? But my argument with it is this: Sugar Hill is a former law enforcement officer. He's a former copper. All right. That's my argument with it all. So, but like they say, it is what it isn't, isn't it? All right. You've got former old Bill training Tyson Fury with somebody who was saying he's Tyson's cousin no relation no blood relation so I don't I don't get all that he's my cousin he's my cousin he's my brother-in-law he's my cousin he's no relation no blood relation so let's tell it straight Andy Lee is no relation to Tyson Fury flew through blood and Sugar Hill is an ex-copper all right enough said on to number 13 and I would have had him higher and I ain't got a problem with him being at number 13 it's Smigger Smig he's always there or thereabouts isn't he Smigger Smig Paul Smigger Smig Smith or Smithy as I know I call, I call him Smithy people call him Real Gone Kid he was, real gone, he was really gone when he fought James the Gale wasn't he and George Groves, who were gone then, had <laughs> gone at game. 
But is he an helmet? Yeah, is it? Yeah, I'd say he's an helmet. Did what I what I Paul Smith fan? I oh, was a massive Paul Smith fan. I tipped him to win a world title. There were people actually gagging, gagging and desperate to train him when he turned pro. He went with Billy Graham, didn't he? But he were big news, Paul Smith, when he when he turned pro. When he was turning over, he was massive news, and he was tipped to go all the way and dominate. He was really that good, and I don't know what happened along along the lines. Something happened along the lines. I don't know what, but Paul Smith. Uh, you've ended up on Porky's Corner, pound for pound helmet, number 13 of the decade. So I don't know what's happened along the lines, Paul, but you know, not so long ago you started out as people tipping you to be an Alaminta, and you've <laughs> and you've ended up, you know, you've ended up like Minty. You've ended up like Minty off EastEnders, not Alan Minty. <laughs> So Paul Smith, helmet number 13 for the decade. Number 12, Andy Clark at Sky. Uh, we know why you've been voted, don't we, Andy Clark? Some of the stuff that you just come out with on social media is general helmetness. Uh, and also, some of the stuff you come out with when you're commentating, it's shocking. Your team match them and team Sky and to hell with anybody else. You should be ashamed of yourself. Some of the things you come out with is just plain old shocking and the bias from you. I thought John Rawlins were bad, but you've took bias to uh, to another. You took bias took bias to another level, Andy. So Andy Clark, pound for pound, helmet number twelve for helmets of the decade. Number eleven, Jake Wood. Now uh, we've only been going on about you for a couple of years, Jake Wood, but you're always there hanging about, aren't you? People tell me little bits and bobs about what you do, I mean, some of the things you're coming out with, Jake, on that podcast that you've got, pound for pound podcast, what a load of trollop, you're probably one of the most biased people that I've ever listened to on a, on a podcast, I have to turn it off, you're never going to be at Boxing Asylum, are you, Jake, you and little jug ears, you're never going to be that, but some of the things that you, you, you're doing is shocking, I mean, I know somebody that nearly ended up sponsoring your podcast and your pitch that you put forward to these people was just plain old begging. I mean, all you do is you just mention somebody on or that's it and you're willing to go to functions and do this and do that and rewind and dine. You're carrying off like you Tom Cruise. It's a boxing podcast. And remember, you and Spencer Fear uh, Spencer Oliver, sorry, Always used to take the mickey out of people with, bodca with podcasts a year ago. I nearly said podcasts. You people laughed at podcasts years ago. All in you used to take mickey out of Boxing Asylum. Well, Boxing Asylum with Steve Wellens and all the chaps, Ozzy and Smitho and all the, the lads from America, it stood the test of time, hasn't it? Andy Patterson and all them boys. It, what, Brian King's the next big pod. You all used to laugh at that, but that's that that were groundbreaking for what they've done, and they're still going strong, them lads. And everybody wants to do a podcast now. Even you lot are doing them. You've had Bell you on, and all your mates, blah de blah, trying to jazz numbers up and things like that. Look, you were all laughing at podcasts years ago. Now look, you're running around practically begging to get sponsorship. Have a word, mate. You're an helmet. So Jake Wood, pound for pound, number eleven helmets at decade. Number 10, Richie Woodall. Richie, I don't know what it is with you, Richie, but you're an ex-fighter, so it's nice to to hear that, to see that you're, you're getting involved in media side and that, but if you're working for Channel 5, Richie, whoever's fighting at Channel 5 that night is best thing since sliced bread. If you're working for Sky, same thing. BT, Box Nation, Dave Channel, you name it you push the narrative because you paid to do it and I can understand that Richie because you know you weren't a millionaire you never made millions out of sport but you've got to start and you've got to start and tell it as it is come on just sh show a bit of honesty all in you know I mean pff, come on just tell it as it is do you know what I mean just do a Clinton Woods or a Robin Reed when they were, were doing a bit for Sky, they just tell it as it is. Yeah, they're not going to get invited back and stuff like that, but 
tell it as it is because when you don't you're misleading the public Richie and you're getting off it's awful to see you do it now it's it's awful so Richie Woodall pound for pound helmet of the decade you should be embarrassed go and speak to Frank uh, so Richie Woodall number 10 pound for pound helmet of the decade number nine He's always there, isn't he? Spencer Fearon. Uh, need I say any more about Spencer Fearon? Uh, people are going to say, ah, oh, you don't say anything about Spencer Fearon because uh, he's connected to MTK. A lot of Spencer Fearon's had votes. He's an Elmer. That's it. He's, num he's number nine, Elmer of the decade. Now, if I were worried about anybody, I wouldn't be putting him in, would I? Spencer Fearon, I'm still in training. When I get down to 14 stone four, we're gonna meet up and we're gonna do we're gonna do the do whether it be in a gym up in Sheffield or one in surrounding areas we're gonna box Spencer over three rounds all right so I hope you well have a good new year get yourself in good shape but Spencer fear and pound for pound number nine helmet of the decade number eight well good old Russell Crowe Gareth A Davis that's the one Gareth A Davis helmet of the decade why well basically because you've now had three operations to remove your head from the back of Eddie Hearn now I don't know what it will like up there I've read it was probably a bit dark and that you know inside Eddie Hearn's rear end you should be embarrassed Gareth A Davis I mean some of the things I've heard about you are, uh, at a press conference earlier on this year was well, do you know it I said no you're joking me and this person said to me no he actually said this and I went oh my god he should be embarrassed he's not only helmet of the decade he's going to probably be helmet of the century if I'd have been doing this podcast in the late 90s we could have had Gareth A Davis as helmet of the century so Gareth A Davis, you voted uh, number eight, Elmer of the decade. Number seven, just like Richie Woodall, isn't it? The haymaker, David Costcutter Hay, Ultratech Sports Raw, named him David Costcutter Hay. Give Ultratech Sports Raw a follow on YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe to his channel. Just like you do mine, and then you get your notifi notifications, don't you? But David A, I I heard him doing the commentary and the pundit work for David Adelaide's debut. Uh, I get on well with David Adelaide, I class him as a friend. And But some of the things that David A were coming out with regarding other fights on the night were plain old shocking. It was, you could say, plain old butchery in the bias business. David A's. It's getting, it's getting bad now for David A, isn't it? I mean, he fooled us with the two fights against Bellew and the Mark DeMori and the Arnold De Gorgi or whatever he's called. The U One of them trained himself on off YouTube. Look, David A, he will fight again. He's still got one more comeback in him. And do you know what that'll be? To beat George Foreman's record. So mark my words, he'll be back just like other people will be back but David A pound for pound number seven helmet of the decade you should be embarrassed David number six Dave Caldwell Penfold the same Penfold that was uh, questioning David A's stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Well, he got it right, didn't he? Whereas everybody else got it wrong. But they had to do, didn't they, to sell it? But they were all in on it, weren't they? They made out there was hate. Hay and Caldwell made out there was hate between them. But behind the scenes, and this is what really gets me, behind the scenes, they were, and I've been told from somebody who works at Sky, right? They were all laughing and joking laughing and joking but even I were fooled by their acting they should be actors they should be in the Godfather 4 shouldn't they laughing and joking and then uh, the Coldwell and Hay and then 
Bellew and Hay hugging after afterwards and saying, will you oblige me and all that. And then it all went to hate again, didn't it, for the rematch and then love again after and now. I mean, have you seen them? They're in other countries laughing and joking at bar and, you know, high-fiving and you set my family up and you set my family up and oh my God, what is all that about? How could we ever buy into a Bellew comeback, uh, a Hay comeback ever again? But Caldwell, he's in the thick of it again, isn't he? He always gets voted for Helmet a month or nearly every month. But you now and then he's gone and dumped Jamie and Gavin McDonald because the surplus to requirements. And they're both Doncaster lads, aren't they? You know, and it's just Helmet behaviour and. Mainly, most of the emails of that is that is because he dumped both of them McDonald twins. You know, a European champion and a world champion. Both of them, and they both earned him good money. I mean, he had two massive paychecks going out there to Texas, didn't he? For them McDonald fights. Parachuted in, wasn't he? Parachuted in, he dropped everything to get in there. Dropped everything to get in with McDonald. And look how he's treating him now, isn't it? Hey, good old Dave Crowell, eh? Lower than a snake's belly. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it isn't. Uh, that's Dave Caldwell. Helmet of the decade, number six. Probably said month on a few of them, have I? I'm all confused. All right. Number five, helmet of the decade. I would have had him a lot higher, but I can only go on what the votes are. You've got it. Sir Edward Hearn. We say sir because, well, he's carrying off like he should be knighted, isn't he? You know, we all talk of AJ being deserving of a knighthood from Eddie Hearn. It's, uh, we'll have to call him Sir Edward, but Eddie Hearn, what can I say? You're going on about Gerald Miller and drug tests and all this, and look how you've behaved with Julio Cesar Chavez. You know, he didn't want to take a drug test and Instead of kicking him off at show, you're trying to you did you move venue or something like that, or you should be embarrassed, Eddie. You should be embarrassed with your handling of the situation with all these jug cheats that you've got around you. You know it's okay when you want to go out in media and say Gerald Miller don't want to work with him, but yet you tried to re-sign him, didn't you? Now Eddie and you behave like an helmet. You keep going on about Joshua's fat fans, but you take him to New York and then Saudi. Now you're stuck with Pulef, you're going to come crying back to the UK, aren't you? But I don't think you will. I think you'll go to Saudi where the money is. So who wants to see Joshua Pulef? Hey? It's business as usual for Eddie Hearn, isn't it, Eddie? Business as usual with Joshua. Just like Christopher Livingston Eubank, you know, the senior Eubank. You milked him and milked him and milked him until fans turned on you. Then you sent him out to Ireland, didn't you, twice? Then you just got bailed out of boxing, you and your dad, didn't you? You were a nipper then, weren't you, but Eddie, Eddie Earn, pound for pound, number five helmet at decade. You should be embarrassed, Eddie Earn. Milking fans like that, 25 quid pay-per-view. Number four. Bean! Beanie! Bean bag! Magic bean, jelly bean, green bean. Bean, runner bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Bake bean. Beanie! Bean! You're there again, aren't you? Rumple Stiltskin. Classy operator! Classy operator! Rough! Tough! Rugged! Oh, well. So, Bean, you're there again, aren't you? You have to do it, don't you, Bean? You have to get in there, don't you? Adam Smith, Mr. Bean. Pound for pound, number four, helmet of the decade. That's right, decade. Number three. Here's Johnny. He's always there, isn't he? He's always there, no matter what. He's like a bad penny, isn't he? He's like... Pff, there's certain boxers that hang about boxing. And they're like a bad smell, aren't they? They just won't go away. And I put Johnny Nelson in that bracket. That's what he is. He's like a, he's like a, it's just like a bad smell, isn't it? He? He's like, you know that. That's what he is. 
He's just like that, isn't he? He's just like one of them, isn't he? A turd. That's what he is. A turd. You know, I used to take Johnny Nelson's tips and put put them on on, on at Bucky's, and he cleaned me out. You know, some years ago, before I was full, fully blown hardcore, I was basically a casual listening to Johnny Nelson's tips. I think I had one winner out of about 25. He's don't ever back a fighter that Johnny Nelson tips. Please don't do it. The man that said Tackham is like George Foreman and uh, Holyfield rolled into one with a bit of Andre Ward. The man that said Kel Brook and Amir Khan beat Triple G and Canelo. Oh my God. And that Conor McGregor, he could see how he beats Mayweather. Please, do me a favour. Do me a favour, Johnny. So Johnny Nelson... You're a bronze medal, Johnny. You took a bronze for Helmet of the Decade. So well done, Mr. Bronze Medal, Johnny Nelson. But what about the silver position, eh? On the podium. Helmet of the Decade. On the podium. Yours truly. Dazzling Darren Barker. The man that married into the Matchroom Dynasty. How are you doing, Dazzler? Probably the greatest ever trainer to ever... To ever uh, to ever old a spit bucket, eh? The man that had Lee Purdy and Dave uh, Allen take batterings off Devon Alexander and David Price, eh? What what were your game plan for them, Darren? I don't know, but a bit like when you came out in Germany to fight Sturm, just came out swingers, didn't you? Knowing you weren't going to last a round, but you got paid, didn't you? That's why you, that's helmet behaviour, that Darren Barker, helmet behaviour. Uh, I can only go on what the votes are but I ain't got any apologies for any of these lot in here they're all deserving of it if they've got the votes uh, some of them probably decent people but don't shoot the messenger so it's Porky's Corner isn't it if you voted you are in you're in it to win it now the gold medal position what can what can I say about this person? What can I say about this person? The gold medal position for Porky's Corner. Two minutes thirty left. Helmets of the decade. The gold medal winner. The one and only. It's the bomber, isn't it? Anthony Bellew. The man that has British Commonwealth, European and World Champion and never took a belt off anybody who was a champion. Never beat a champion. The champion who never beat a champion. Two and three in world title fights. He beat Alundo Macabo in a life and death and Blowjob Flores in a defence. That is it. Swerved the... The World Boxing Super Series tournament swerved it, but then came back and said he was best cruiserweight after two juicy paydays versus David A. Came back for another pay per view, his fourth, which is one more than Carl Froch, after the cleverly stinker and the two hay stinkers. He came back for an Usyk payday and got iced just like he did Adonis Stevenson because he can't fight Southpaws. But he can fight and he deserves respect because he's a boxer. But like I said, I'm only going on what the votes are. And overwhelmingly, not only did he not squeak by, he stormed it. He stormed it and he won our first ever helmet of the decade. Anthony Bellew, the disappearing man. The man that wants to disappear and... Two seconds... If you, I'm not going to tell you how many this is because I haven't got long left. Go on to Google. Google his name on Google and put Anthony Bellew. Tony Bellew, Google. Tony Bellew YouTube and it'll tell you how many videos he's done since he wanted to disappear. All right. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, press the subscribe button and the like button. All right. Shout out to Innovation Alloys, South Yorkshire Packaging and... Robin Reed Multivitamins, good friend of mine Robin, Happy New Year to everybody and uh, thank you for watching the first video of the year 2020, Helmets of the Decade and the winner is Tony Bellew.
eh? They're disappearing, man.